Hey guys, the bub. I want to give you a little showdown on a uh, Behringer right here, the DDM 4000. This is my setup. Virtual DJ running to a Hercules RMX. So you act as a sound card. Going to two Serato Scratch Live time codes and up to the Behringer. Here is a little bit of music, so we can listen to the good uh, Behringer. A little chill out music. That's what we got here. The Behringer. Professional DJ mixer. DDM 4000. We've got our mic section, channel one through four. We have a this is a phono line button. Right now I have it online because I am using Serato Scratch Live. We have a kill section for each EQ. We also have a multi mode so you can just kill it right off the bat. So if you just want highs, boom, you only get highs. Meds, you only get meds. Lows, you only get mo lows. Nice little, nice little option. It goes across all the whole board. Got our output, main output section here with the lights. We got output A, balance, output B. So we want to do some recording, which I do. Crank that up, put it into addition, Adobe Edition. As you can see, the output lights aren't doing anything, but you hear music. That's because it's like 7 a.m., and I don't want to crank this shit. <laughs> so right here we have an Ultramize button, which like pumps the mix up. If we'll do it real quick, just listen. Punches the mix up, and you can control how much that Ultramize button punches or gains in the main uh, options. We also have a load function. If you push this, this will go to here, and it will save all your settings on your mixer. You have a bunch of banks that you can save your presets in and then load them once you start up the mixer again. Just a nice function. Uh, we'll go to the effects section. we got FX1, FX2, and this is the section. We'll break it up. So FX1 is over here. There's FX2 is over here. This is our MIDI buttons. So turn on MIDI and... We also have the clock MIDI sequence, so you could find out the time that's coming in from an output MIDI sequencer or um, one of those, I don't know, the Electribes or whatever. Uh, the effects section has really nice effects. It has flanger, phaser, delay, echo, pitch, mid crusher, reverb, pan, filter. Really nice section. Uh, section of effects, and it, you can actually link these two effects of se sections together, so you chain them, and uh, you can get some really cool effects sounds out of them. And uh, effects section two has the same options for effects. Uh, we have four channels for your volume. Uh, we have the uh, kill for your headphones, so you can just hear them in your headphones. Uh, crossfade assigns for each channel. This is our sampler section. And uh, this is how much volume the sample goes into your mix. Or you can just instantly punch it into the mix by hitting that insert button. This is your recording source, channel 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, sample length for our sampler. Record button, two banks. It's pretty cool. We also have uh, a loop section. We can reverse the loop. Or you can just have it do a one time, a one shot. Um, this is the channel assign and also the effects button for the sampler. This is a great section. These are high, mid, and low kills for the crossfade on that channel and you can actually change how much filter it cuts out on. So right now this low cuts out at maybe 220 hertz so you can still hear a little bit of bass in your mix but channel 2 will take over the main bass so it doesn't feel like channel A's mix is hollow, so to speak. Um, and that's for both assignments, uh, both channel assignments, you have that. It looks like our song's over. We'll play some uh, 
I'm a dubstep. I'm a dubstep fan myself. That's what I like to do. Nice. So again, crossfader for both assignments for that cutout. If you cut out all of them, so if we very powerful if you use it within your mix because it it's cutting out through frequency not through volume you understand not through volume through frequency so it's a little it makes the mix sound more richer and on your crossfade we have the curve setting you can adjust the curve so if you're a DJ you can really shake that really I don't know get the real nice cuts out of it I mix so I usually have it between like smooth and like it's like right in between and you can always go back to a real nice smooth cross fade curve with a real smooth old cross um, this cross fader section I believe is for Syncing up to MIDI, but I'm not too sure. I haven't read into it too much. Uh, you got your headphone selection. So these, these right here is um, this is so you can punch in only the highs in your headphones. This is so you can only hear the bass in your headphones. It's a pretty cool option. And this is the split channel one, two, three, or four between left and right of your headphones. I don't use that. I like to have them full size. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you got MIDI back here. It's got uh, SPDIF out. Um, also got auxiliary out. That's about it. I gotta go to work now.